Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth and if you're new, welcome. Today I am finishing a little quilt I started in my last video and as I was working on it, I had a few missteps. I changed my mind a couple of times, so I'm gonna take you along for that little journey. Let's get started. Here's the little quilt top that I made in my last video and before leaving on a trip, I cut a piece of batting and some backing a little bit larger than my quilt top. And I decided I would be hand quilting this, so I brought some thread along and I'm going to put some big basting stitches in this small quilt. I'm using a double strand of thread and I'm starting in the middle and I'm going to put some big stitches just moving out from the center of this quilt and I'll do that four times from the center and then I'll add some more stitches here and there and I started with a knot but when I finish up I I will not put a knot in the thread. I think it'll stay in just fine and it'll make it just a little bit easier when I go to take this basting thread out of my little quilt here. After getting all of my quilt basted, I changed my mind and I took out all of those basting stitches, which was kind of silly because uh, I'm going to put them right back in again. I pulled out some embroidery floss as I was putting those stitches and I just couldn't help but think maybe this would look nice with some embroidery in those baskets. So I drew a little pattern and I used a pencil and a piece of paper that was just that size of that triangle and I just doodled a little vine with some flowers, a very simple design, but in the end, I'm going to tell you ahead of time, I decided it was just too busy for this quilt, but here I am, I'm going to add my design with a pencil and I just did it freehand because this is a very simple design. I gave myself the 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 stem, the flower stems, there are just five stems and then I figured once I get my stems on there I can just put the flowers on the end. So I did not draw the flowers or the tinier leaves in my um, design. And 
here I am still working on that original idea. I'm going to make the flower stems a little bit darker so that when I add this design to the other three triangles, I can set it underneath the muslin and I will be able to see those vines or those stems and I can transfer it to the fabric. And I'm going to use just a standard pencil Pencil is very safe on fabric. It can be washed out easily. So I gave myself the larger leaves and the flower stems. I chose this sort of teal uh, embroidery thread for the stems and the leaves and a red for the flowers. Here is my finished design. I was going to go back and do more filming when I did the other triangles, but I finished this first triangle and I slept on it and I decided it was just too much for this little quilt. I don't know, I thought it would be too busy. So in the end, I sat down and used some scissors and I very carefully removed all of my stitches. Once I had my embroidery stitches removed, I had to add those big basting stitches again. So like I said, this quilt has been a little bit forward steps and backward steps, and I tried to remove my pencil marks. I did not remove them completely quite yet. And I was on a long car trip this last weekend, so it was the perfect opportunity to do some hand quilting with this beautiful scenery going by, really peaceful car trip across the um, New Mexico and Arizona and I had something to do which I really enjoy when there's a long trip involved. When I got home, I had a little bit more of that hand quilting to do, and the easiest way to hand quilt a quilt is just to follow the seams. It's just an echo of what you've already done with your patchwork, and so I am uh, placing my quilting stitches just about a quarter inch away from the seam, and here in the baskets I'm just following the seam in just the colored triangles.
At one point I did try to get more of those pencil lines off of my little quilt here so I used a clean toothbrush, an old clean toothbrush and a little spray bottle and I just scrubbed a little with that and really got rid of most of the pencil that's in this quilt and later on I can do more of a wash but I'm going to keep hand quilting this beautiful little quilt and I'm really happy that I took those embroidery stitches out <laughs> even though I like the design I don't think it really went with this beautiful little this is a really simple design and a peaceful design I really like it After getting all of my quilting stitches in, I took those basting stitches out and I trimmed away the batting and backing the excess around the outside of this little quilt. I found a very soft colored stripe in my stash and the colors are just perfect for my little baskets and I'm cutting two strips that are one and three quarter inch wide. This is a small quilt that will probably be either hanging on the wall or in the middle of a table so it won't be getting a lot of use so I just want one layer of uh, binding not a double uh, binding and I will put the two ends together and I will sew diagonally from corner to corner and trim off the excess and I'll have my a binding piece long enough to go all the way around my little quilt.
going to attach the binding to the front and roll it over to the back and hand stitch all the way around and I'll be leaving a tail so that I can make a continuous binding so you won't be able to really tell where it ends and where it begins. So I'm going to start here leaving a little tail. I'll sew almost to the end, not quite, and I'll stop and I'll pivot and then sew off of that corner and then after I take it out of the machine there's my little diagonal stitch. I will fold the binding up and then down and I'll start sewing on the right side there right from the top of the quilt from the very top right through that fold and that will give me a nice corner when I go and turn this binding to the back. Here are the two tails of my binding and I will be folding the left side here and I will also fold the right side and I'll be cutting one of those folds. So I'm going to cut right along the fold on the right. I made myself a little mark, a fold mark there and I kind of can tell with the stripes in this fabric make it really easy to, to see where to cut and then I will take that piece that I just cut off, it's just the right width, it's one and three quarters inches, and I'm going to set it right along that fold and I will cut on the left side there and when I attach these two ends just like I did at when I uh, joined the long piece, I will, it will be per at the perfect size. So I put them together sort of at um, right sides together at an angle there and I will sew from corner to corner again and I'll double check after I put that seam in there I'm going to double check that it's the right size before I trim away the excess triangles. was the right size so I'm going to pin that binding down and I will just finish up sewing the binding that little area there that hasn't been attached yet and after turning the binding to the back I'm going to hand stitch all the way around.
using a needle and thread and of course I had to tuck in the raw edge and after beginning stitching this binding down I made another decision a kind of funny this little quilt keeps taking me backwards instead of forwards but I decided that I would kind of like to hang this little quilt and it would be very convenient to make a little pocket for a wooden dowel so before I finished sewing the binding down I got some large squares they're six inch squares and I pressed them in half and I'm going to place them on the back of my quilt before I finish with the binding and I'm going to attach these little uh, triangles just following that seam that I used for the binding. It was a little bit tricky adding these triangles or these folded squares after attaching the binding. I just had to be careful at the corner there not to sew over that fold the wrong direction. And now I will have an easy way to hang this little quilt. After hand stitching all the way around on the back with this binding, I have a dowel that's the same width as my quilt, so I'll be able to just slide it into those little pockets and hang it up on the wall and enjoy this beautiful basket quilt. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time.